Hello, welcome to the Bunting Magnetics Tech Corner. We're going to talk about metal detection today. This particular unit is our AMD05 meat line unit. This one has a touch display with 5.1 electronics. All the bunting metal detectors use three coil technology. They have a transmitter coil in the center of the aperture, and they have a receiver coil on this side and a receiver coil on the other side. Those coils are electronically balanced, and they are looking for a change in magnetic field within the aperture of the detector, or they're looking for a change in conduction between the coils, or they're looking for a change in the phase relationship between the coils. Anytime that happens, you will get a reject on the reject device. Ferrous metal provides a change in the magnetic field of the coils. It causes a change in the conduction between the coils, and it also causes a change in the phase relationship between the coils. So ferrous metal makes the biggest change. So we're going to take this ferrous test piece and we're going to go through the aperture. As you can see, we've got a solid ball indication of a metal event and a reject. Our reject device changed states over here and then returned back to normal. So when I pull this back out, we get another metal event just like the one before. This is the non-ferrous unit or a test piece. The non-ferrous is not going to change the magnetic field. However, it is going to cause a change in conduction between the coils, and it will cause a change in the phase relationship. This is the second easiest test piece to find. I notice we only got one reject with this, with this particular uh, test. And that was because the second metal event fell within the reject time of the first metal event. Last but not least is the stainless steel test piece. The stainless steel test piece, by and large, does not affect the uh, magnetic field of the coil. It is not a very good conductor, so it doesn't cause a lot of change in conduction. However, it does cause a change in the phase relationship between the coils. We'll try the stainless steel test piece. And as you can see, we've got a nice indication. You can actually see the signal stream of the metal piece as it goes through. This entire unit is made from stainless steel, food grade stainless steel, along with the reject device. We're going to take it apart in just a moment and we'll show you what it looks like on the inside. This is the reject device of our meat line unit. It consists of the reject housing itself. There is a pneumatic valve on the back that actually changes the position of the reject valve. And then there is a reject bucket down here. The good material coming out this side, just like this. So we're going to take this unit apart First thing we're going to do to be safe is we're going to release the air. So our air is released and now we're going to open up this housing right here. And as you can see it's very easy, very easy to take that uh, housing apart. This is your diverter valve here. This is the housing on the inside. You can see where the good material would come right through here. And then as this diverter valve changes position, it will divert the contaminated material right through this port here and down into the waste bucket. 